Hey everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my very first philosophy video. I'm super excited that you're here, I'm happy to be here, and yeah, so before I get into my stitching that I have to show you guys, I want to give you guys a little bit of background about me. So I'm 23, I graduated from RIT about a year ago, um, I'm from Rochester, New York. Uh, I learned how to stitch when I was probably 8 or 10, I don't remember exactly, but I learned from my grandma. Um, she had a ton of old patterns, fabric, floss, um, so she taught me how to stitch when I'd go over there, and she actually passed down all of her collection to me, so I have a huge stash down in my basement. Um, I actually want to do a, like, stash video. Uh, I spent one summer just, like, organizing all of it, like, winding all of the floss on bobbins, like, making sure all the boxes were in number order, and, like, putting all the patterns, like, in a good organized way so I definitely want to get into that for you guys in a video but that's not today um I started watching floss tube a few years ago I would say and cross stitching and floss tube has always kind of been like an on and off hobby for me like through school and as I've gotten older um just because I feel like when I was little I didn't I don't know it was very much like I'd start it and then I'd put my project down forget about it never finish anything my grandma used to get so mad because I would start projects and not finish them like all the time um but yeah so cross stitching on and off since I was 8 or 10 and then watching floss tube on and off for the last few years um I don't watch a ton of floss tubers I kind of have like a couple that I found and I pretty much just stick to their videos I have been trying to branch out a little lately but it's just hard because there's so many floss tubers out there and so it's hard to kind of see like who I'm gonna like connect with kind of um the very first flossy video I ever watched was from Stitching Jewels um and I was fascinated by her because she does a lot of um full coverage pieces this was years and years ago so it was before she started her like online store and designing and stuff like that but I found her when she was doing mainly just full coverage pieces and I thought that was crazy I'd never seen anything like that and I was completely infatuated and thought like that was just the coolest thing ever um and then she started doing like monochrome pieces by Ronnie Rowe and so that's kind of when I found her and then I found Nell from Little Yellow House Crafts I have loved her videos too um and I forget, I think she has three boys now, and so I found her back when she was, like, pregnant with her youngest, um, and I just thought she was so sweet. I loved watching her videos, and she made, um, the Little Sheep Virtues piece, um, where you put, like, all the sheep together on one pattern, and then I don't remember about the other pattern that, like, goes in the middle, but it's kind of like the meadow with the sheep on it, and so when I saw her make that, I was like, I love that. And then the other floss tuber I watch most is... Um, Megan from Georgia Girl Stitching and I love her um, seeing her I found her like from her very first Flossy video so I've been following her since the beginning and it's cool to just see like another younger person uh, who likes to cross stitch and do that kind of stuff because I don't have friends who cross stitch like I'm the only person I really know um, who cross stitches so I've loved seeing her um, I don't know that she has like something in particular that I really liked seeing her stitch I just love seeing you know what she's up to so yeah those are the cross stitchers I watch most oh you know what it was about Megan it was her talking about keepsakes um the cross stitch shop in Cincinnati um I know a lot of people have heard about them um I am nowhere near Cincinnati so I have never been able to go but like hearing her talk about keepsakes and that community that she has there I've absolutely loved I'm actually planning a trip to keepsakes soon because I'm going to be in the Cincinnati area around Christmas so I'm so 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 excited I've been looking forward to it for weeks um when I found out I was going to be around Cincinnati I was like that's going on the to-do list like I don't care how far out of the way we have to drive we're going so I'll definitely have some haul from there coming up soon but yeah I think that's everything that I kind of wanted to share with you guys first um yeah so I think the only other thing I was going to say is I've always been a very monogamous stitcher so especially because my grandma was so hard on me to like start one thing and finish it I didn't realize until I started watching floss tube that people stitch on so many things at the same time and like rotate pat projects in and out and I thought that was the coolest thing ever um in school like for the past few years it's been hard to do that so I'm just now getting into like having a couple of things going at the same time um I also had no idea about linen and different types of fabric and different types of floss like I grew when I learned it was like you stitch on 14 count ADA and you use DMC and like that's it so I'm really excited now that um 
I'm out of school and stuff like that to be able to kind of delve, try some new things, try new fabrics, new flaws, all that kind of stuff. I asked for a few different patterns for Christmas, so um, hopefully I'll be able to try all of that. And one of my projects that I'm working on now is actually on something other than 14 Count Ada, which I think is fantastic. I'm so excited about it. Uh, but yeah, so I have some a couple of whips to show you, a couple finished projects, and then another non um, non cross stitch project. So I'm gonna do my whips in order of like oldest to newest, and it's funny because I have three, and you can see very clearly like how old they are. Um, so the first one is, and this is a pattern from my grandma. So this was a Bucilla kit. And it's called Summer Symphony. So it's just this beautiful house. And I started this a really, really long time ago. And then just sat in my basement in its bag for years. So when I just came home recently, I picked it up. And I was like, this is what we're working on. Because I had just finished a piece. Um, and you can tell it's old by the blue tape on the edges. Um, so here's where we're at. So the pattern is like one huge um, like piece of paper but I have it folded up into quarters so this edge is like the edge of the first fold and then this bottom is like the bottom so once I finish this like big white square um, I'll be done with like the first page so to speak so that's where I'm at and I'm using the parking method on this I just learned how to do that recently um, I had never heard of that before so this whole bottom part I've done with the, the parking method and it's gone pretty quick but all of this up here was done just like I don't know not with the parking method so it's just kind of like carrying the colors throughout and I learned how to do the parking method recently on a piece that I'll show you guys soon and oh my gosh my life has changed forever this is also my first needle minder that I've ever used and now I like can't go back. I love having a needle minder and this is the only one I have too. I asked for some for Christmas but um it's the only one I have so it's so frustrating that like it's moving around projects or like not having it on a project. I'm like I need a needle minder. Like I don't know how to work without it. Um, so that is the oldest and it is just all kit colors so they all came on these cards. Um, there were two cards but then my cousin's dog ate one of the cards so now some of the colors are just on bobbins and I have them looped on the little like holes at the bottom um, I did not know about floss drops until recently um, sorry the chair I'm sitting in is so old and squeaky but Adam Hart cross stitch on TikTok I saw her floss bobbins and at first I was like I don't get it like why do people use bobbins like that seems so silly like why wouldn't you want them wound i'm sorry floss drops why do people use floss drops that seems so silly why don't you want them wound on bobbins they're so nice to keep in box like the boxes um and then i learned about how you can like once they're looped like this you can just pull up one strand and it's like so easy and i was like mind blown we're doing that from now on um most of my floss is still on bobbins but slowly we're going to be transitioning as i work on projects um i actually asked for floss drops for christmas the ones from adam hart cross stitch i asked for her like bobbin drops so that you can both store them in a box and have them long for your projects excuse me so that's my oldest project the next project i have it's a pattern off of Etsy, and it is from Happy Sloth, and I'm sorry, this one is 14 count white Ada, uh, same with this one. So this is a pattern from Happy Sloth Patterns on Etsy, and it's Friends, and I don't have a picture of like the finished piece, so I'll have to put one on the screen, but this is where I'm at with this, so it's going to be all six characters, so then the guys are going to be like on the bottom row down here, so Phoebe is completely done, and then... Rachel is like half done and I started Monica and I started filling in her uh, face but that's as far as I've gotten um, this you can see there's like some light grid lines on here that was something I learned from stitching jewels was like gridding your fabric and following the like 10 by 10 grid again like not something I had ever learned uh, my grandma while she did teach me how to cross it she wasn't like as into it or maybe she was like back in the day and just didn't pass that knowledge on to me um so like I never knew about that and once I learned how to like 
use a water soluble marker and like mark my fabric it's been a game changer um so i love to do that especially on those full coverage pieces and i'm sure you saw it on the other one too um with the parking and stuff so that is friends and then the third whip that i have is another pattern from my grandma and it's called calico house so it's an old leaflet and it actually comes with two colorways a brown and a blue i'm doing the blue one and again like i had tape on the first one and then this piece i have like zigzag on the edges where i like folded the edge over and like sewed it myself to stop the fraying um and then this one i actually have like a blanket stitch around the edge and I'm trying that out and I think I like it because it's the least bulky um, but I'm this far so I've just started the roof and then the little flowers as well um, and this is actually the first piece I've stitched on something other than 14 count Ada so this is 22 count Hardanger I really don't know what color it is the the package didn't say it's not pure white but it's like an off-white um, but it's pretty. I think it'll really look nice with the blue. Um, on this piece, the house itself isn't stitched. So, like this part here and then this part here isn't stitched. So it'll just be this off-white color. So I think that'll look really nice. Um, and then I'm just using the cold for colors. Thankfully, it's not a lot of colors. So here's those. And again, just DMC. And yes, so those are my three whips. I don't think I've ever had three whips in my whole life, but I'm super excited for them. Um, and then next I have some full finishes. So these, I have two that I framed myself and then one that's professionally framed. So this piece is one that I'm like literally the most proud of. Um, this is off of Etsy. I have to look up. I don't know the designer. So I'll link it down below. And I don't think I could pronounce it if I did know it off the top of my head. But it's this girl facing a lighthouse. And this is to be kind of like in memory of my favorite vacation spot. Um, we always go to Maine with my family every year. And so I did this like in honor of that. And I actually travel for work. I have been traveling since January uh, 2022, like pretty much full time. So this was my like travel piece that I took on the road with me. Which is another reason I haven't been able to have a lot of like pieces that I'm working on at the same time. Just because it's hard to travel with a lot of stuff and so I worked on this kind of on and off throughout the year and then the last like two months I pretty much exclusively just stitched on this all the time to try and get it done but I just have it in a standard 8x10 frame and this is the first thing I ever framed myself um it was hard because the fabric was kind of warped um from my tension so this like top corner was like whoop um so it's not perfectly straight but like you you can't tell and it's just mounted on foam core and then put in the frame and again it's not perfect it is just like up against the glass but I don't care I'd rather have it protected and shown off than just sitting somewhere till I have the money to like pay somebody to frame it and I think it came out pretty good um so like and this is the back I have some paper over it to protect it and yeah I love her I'm super 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 proud of her uh, the sky is all half stitches, and then everything else is like full, um, full cross stitch. And again, just 14 count Ada, but like, you can't really tell because it's full coverage. And then once I framed that and it came out successful, I was like, okay, we can do this. So I framed this piece that I finished a while back, um, and it had just been sitting in my basement. So this is just a succulent, and it's in a... I think it's a 12 by 12 frame with an 8 by 8 mat and again just off the shelf from Michaels um this was the f I stitched this a long time ago like I said and it's just been sitting down in my basement collecting dust so I was super excited to be able to get this into a frame it is slightly too big actually for the frame you can see the edges kind of poke under the inner mat um but when I measured it I didn't realize that like this inner since it's a double mat I didn't realize that the inner mat was slightly smaller than 8 by 8 um but they like came like this and so I couldn't get them apart without messing it up so I was like you know what again it's fine I'd rather have it protected than than not so this is my little succulent and again I don't know off the top of my head who made this but it's from Etsy and I will have it linked down below 
And then, sorry, this chair is so obnoxious. My last finish is actually a gift. So I'm filming this on, I don't even know what day it is. Monday the 12th, I think. Um, but this video won't go up until after I've given this gift so that I can show it to you guys. Um, and we get it. So this is a gift for my boyfriend. Um, I stitched this on 14 count white Eda and it is, is fraternity crest. So this is his Christmas gift. And this is the piece I did get professionally framed. So um, it's got the mat and a gold frame and I'm absolutely in love with it. Um, it stitched up pretty quick. The hardest part about it was just like these huge solid sections because they just take a while. But, yeah, so I hope he likes it. I'm hoping he'll put it in his new office. He works for his fraternity, so I think this will be perfect um, to go in there. So this is his Christmas gift. I have to wrap it up today, um, which is why I'm filming this today, because I need to wrap this up because I'm flying with it. It's going to be my carry-on item. So I need to wrap it in bubble wrap and cardboard and hope that I don't break it on the plane, because that would be literally so sad, especially because it is professionally done. Like that's not cheap <laughs> so yeah so that didn't take me too too long to do and again pretty easy I just found the pattern on I think Greek gear they have like a bunch of fraternity sorority crests um, so if you're looking if you know someone in a fraternity sorority you want to make a gift for them that's a great idea um, and then my last thing that I have to show you guys actually isn't cross stitch it's a quilt that I've made um, a long long time ago when I was little I wanted to get into quilting never did but I had all these like embroidered pieces from my grandmother that she passed down to me with all of her like cross stitch patterns and floss and stuff like that and they've been sitting again in the basement in a drawer collecting dust for years and I just had like an epiphany recently and I was like I'm gonna turn them into a quilt so do I know how to quilt no um but I have a sewing machine I'm like I know the basics so I was like we're just gonna try it see what happens and let me unfold it Make sure it's right side up. This is what we have. So there are 22. Let me back up so you guys can see it. There are 22 embroidered squares on here. And then everything else is just like regular cotton. I don't even know if you can see it all. Um, I'll try and put in a picture as well. And then the back is just purple and I did square quilting marks on it um just like down I just did like down the seams because I didn't want to take away from the embroidery and like again very first quilt so very very new uh didn't want to do anything too difficult it is so far from perfect so like that kind of bugs me because like I see the imperfections you know like the seams don't all line up nice and the edge isn't perfectly square but I made this in like three days I got so tunnel vision on it I was just like this is what we're doing and we're doing it until it's done um, and I am super super proud of it I picked out all the fabric myself and yeah so I love it I'm super excited that these pieces like all these embroidered pieces finally have a home and I love it um, they were embroidered by one of my great aunts like decades ago I don't even know um, but I'm happy that they have a home I do still have to tack down the corners um, but since I worked on it so much for three days I was just like I can't <laughs> I can't do that right now so I'll probably do that later today um, but yeah, so that is everything I have to show you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you subscribe. Um, like I said, I want to do kind of like a stash walkthrough to go through all my grandma's old patterns and stuff and floss, show you guys what I have and maybe get some info for what I should work on next. Um, I also will be showing like haul from Christmas and from keepsakes. I don't know how much I'll get, so I don't know if that'll be its own video or what, but Definitely have some more fun things coming and thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.